Welcome everybody and a big Hare Krishna and happy Janmashmi or happy Vyas Puja from wherever you are today. And I'm very honored on behalf of the GBC strategic planning team to be speaking to Vegavan uh, Prabhu today. So thank you so much for joining us today. It's such an honor to have you. How are you Prabhu so far? How's everything going? Thank you very much. I'm honored for being invited to this uh, festival of glorification. Uh, I'm doing fine, thank you. And um, you look like you're doing fine too. Oh, it's been over here. One thing is, is we're, I'm in the UK, so we are celebrating, of course, Janmashmi. And then there's some other parts of the world that are celebrating Vyas Puja. So it's just a two-day amazing festival that's going on. But bringing back to yourself, Prabhu, I just want to just give a little brief bio to those that may not have heard of yourself. I'm sure many have, but just in case. Um, so Prabhuji here, he actually joined ISKCON in Mumbai in the early 1971. And of course, that's when he got initiated. And of course, you got married to, at that time as well, to Padmavati Mataji in March in the same year, which is amazing. Uh, and also, it was the first Hare Krishna festival uh, at Cross Maiden, Mumbai, where it happened, uh, which I'm sure we're going to be speaking about later. You also traveled with Srila Prabhupada as his personal secretary on his tour in 1971 in May to Malaysia and Sydney, Australia. And then after uh, Srila Prabhupada actually left Australia, you stayed behind and you actually started a temple in Melbourne and also started a temple in Perth afterwards, which is in Western Australia. And then in 1973, Srila Prabhupada suggested that because you're Swedish, why don't you start something in your native country in Sweden? So this is where we are coming on to. So Srila Prabhupada's journey to the far corners of the world, where here we're speaking to Ve Vega Van Prabhu and actually the experiences of his journey in starting in Sweden, the ISKCON centers. So, Prabhu, you're, you're at the moment, you're living in South Sweden in a very picturesque village, if I'm correct. Is that right? That's With right. With 10 devotees? Yes, it's very nice uh, location, very picturesque. And uh, around this village uh, are altogether 10 devotees. Wow. But let me just correct the a few things there. Uh, I did co-start a, um, a temple in, in Melbourne. Uh, I wasn't the only one. Uh, but I did start a temple in, in Perth, that's true. And coming to Sweden, we were um, uh, Ajit Prabhu and his wife and my wife. Yeah. No, yes. Thank you. Thank you for the correction. And, and so when starting, of course, you've traveled the world. And I just wanted to just before we go into coming into Sweden, if it's okay. Um, how was your first interaction with Srila Prabhupada? So, of course, in 1971 in Mumbai, uh, you met Srila Prabhupada. Yes, uh, although um, I did meet him in this uh, shape uh, and form of a book, the Bhagavad Gita, the first Bhagavad Gita, as I was traveling overland uh, to India, I, I came across the Bhagavad Gita in Afghanistan. Oh. Oh, yes. Uh, can I tell a story? It's quite, please, uh, please. Yeah, this, yeah. Uh, out of all places, Afghanistan. That's amazing. <laughs> well, you know, they, there was a lot of travelers going. You know, this is the romantic period of the hippies. So a lot of people going to India overland. It was then possible. And uh, in Afghanistan, um, we all used to gather in a hotel and discuss main, mainly spiritual things. So there was one person there and he said, yeah, well, you know, actually I have a book here, Bhagavad Gita, which is the one you have to read. I said, well, I already read Bhagavad Gita in Sweden and I liked it. But uh, yeah, he said, no, no, you got to read this one. So he lent it to me and sure enough, uh, you know, I felt at home uh, reading Prabhupada's, uh, I felt Prabhupada's spirit, you know. Then um, as fate had it, 
uh, the Afghani police came and raided the hotel. And this person happened to be a smuggler. Oh. Uh, the one with the Bhagavad Gita. He, he, he smuggled uh, hashish. So he had to make a run for it, which he did. And I was left with the Bhagavad Gita. And uh, I can't say I was too sorry about that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but the story continues. We moved on and um, we were going towards India. And eventually we ended up in Pakistan. And also, as fate had it, ended up in the same hotel as that person who gave, who lent me the who Bhagavad Gita. The... Wow. Yeah. So he said, can I have it back? Uh, reluctantly, I said yes. But then the Pakistani police came, and he had to make a run for it again. <laughs> <laughs> and I never saw him after that. <laughs> so you so got the, the Bhagavad Gita back? <laughs> I, I got it back. Wow. So that's the story. So, so from Afghanistan then in Pakistan, and then he had to run for it twice. And that Bhagavad Gita was meant to be. It meant to be for you. That's, uh, that's for sure. That's, that, that's such a nice way of getting a Bhagavad Gita. I love that. <laughs> so how did you then, from that point, you got the Bhagavad Gita, and how did the story happen from then to go to Mumbai uh, in, in early Jan, Feb 1971? Well, um Having uh, we've been having read the the, uh, the Bhagavad Gita, we're looking for Krishna everywhere in uh, in India. Of course, you see the signs in every street and everything. Yeah. But um, I never ended up going to Brindavan. I didn't know uh, mm. that Brindavan existed. So I uh, went through India and then uh, continued over overland to uh, Thailand, Malaysia, and Indonesia, and then to Australia. And in Australia, um, I met the devotees in Sydney. And um, uh, I used to start, uh, we went to the temple, me, Ajit, and my wife and his girlfriend. We used to start, uh, come to the devotees in, in and there was Upendra and Bali Mardan um, running the temple. And, uh, but we, figured let's go and join the temple in London, very place. Uh, I don't know if that was an excuse or whatever <laughs> uh, to another short period of so-called freedom. Uh, so we went back, uh, but on the, on the way back, Ajit Prabhu turned back. He went back to Sydney uh, mm -hmm. to join the temple. I went on with my wife and um, we joined in uh, Mumbai, Bombay. That's how, right. it, that's how it happened. Fantastic. And of course, then you got married. Um, and it was the first Hare Krishna festival in Cross Maiden in Mumbai. That was this, that's when your, your marriage happened at that time, wasn't it? Which is it very... was huge. It was huge. Yeah. So many people came to the festival uh, and for the wedding and initiations. Uh, I mean, I was initiated, we were both initiated at that time, together with a lot of devotees uh, and um, married. And um, I think they said it was 20,000 people in that tent in the Pandal. Well, that's, yeah. uh, that's a very big uh, reception party, isn't it? <laughs> it was huge. <laughs> and there's a little funny story to that. About uh, 20 years later, I was uh, going in, in Bombay and walking down the street, and an old man came and says, I was at your wedding. <laughs> <laughs> and I changed bodies a couple of times by then, you know, bigger and, st bigger and hopefully stronger. Uh, so that was amazing. He recognized me. That's amazing. Usually in uh, weddings, especially Indian weddings, as you probably know, you get a, you get a guest list of about 1,000 people at least, so here, I think you've topped it with 20,000. I think that's... Uh... <laughs> I think we topped it. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. So from, from there, you yourself, because uh, of your travels as well, you 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 then joined Srila Prabhupada as his personal uh, secretary uh, on his tour to Malaysia and Sydney. How did that come about, if I may ask? Well... Um... We did the uh, Pandal with Prabhupada, and um, then it was time for him. He was invited to go to, to Sydney. 
Um, and uh, so um, at the marriage ceremony, Prabhupada asked us, um, it was me actually, so where do you want to go? Do you want to go to Sweden or Australia? And I, mm. I said, uh, you know, as I do what he would, wherever you want me, Prabhupada. Wow. And uh, so he said, I think you should go to Australia. So um, I, and Prabhupada needed someone to, you know, uh, carry his bags and uh, take care of him. Uh, so they said, well, he's going to Australia anyway. So um, why doesn't he go with you, Prabhupada? So Prabhupada said, yeah, that, that's good. My wife stayed back a few months in mm. India. Um, and um, then Prabhupada and I left. And uh, we went to, uh, as you said, to Malaysia and did programs there. And in Malaysia, um, I... I was so intent on getting Prabhupada into Australia, getting visas. Uh, I was running around to the embassies and getting all the necessary documents. I forgot about my own. Oh. Uh, yeah. Well, I, you know, I'd come from Australia a few months before and I uh, thought maybe it's valid for another entrance. Yeah. So by the time you got on the plane and, and, and then Singapore, then uh, they said you can't go. Uh, they won't let you in. Uh, and I, anyway, I pleaded with them, so they put me on the plane anyway. And coming to Australia was, uh, you know, immediately picked up by the uh, customs uh, officers and the immigration, and so you can't come in. I said, well, I have to, I'm, I have to look after this elderly gentleman here. And I said, but you don't have a visa. And uh, I said, but I, I got married to an Australian. I was desperate. How do we know? And so, and so I showed pictures from the panda <laughs> and the marriage. And after a little bit of talking, they let me in. I couldn't believe it. And not only that, but I got a stamp in the passport, indefinite stay. Oh, my so God. That was Prabhupada's magic. That, I, I, because I visited Australia. Uh, I was fortunate to travel with my spiritual master, His Holiness Jai Pataka Swami Maharaj. And... Uh, I saw how strict Australia border force is. Um, the way we even had to go, like I had a British passport. I think I'll be all right, but they'll do all the checks. And for you to get in without a visa and get a stamp for indefinite leave to remain, that has to be, that is no coincidence. Like you said, that's Prabhupada's magic. Absolutely. Because you know the first the first officer that uh, took me and said you can't go in, I, I eventually asked to see his superior uh, officer, and uh, that's what he, and he gave the uh, okay. When I came back to that first officer, he couldn't believe it. This never happened before, <laughs> so that had to be proud about. That is that is. Thank you for sharing. That's uh, that's really lovely to know. And so now you've got in. On your indefinite leave to remain, um, yeah. you, you then, of course, as you've said, um, Srila Prabhupada, after the sessions, he, he went back, uh, he left Australia, and you uh, helped start the temple in Melbourne, if I'm correct. Um, I was, was, I was in first? Sydney first. Okay. I, I joined the temple in uh, the temple that was uh, structured that was in, um, in, in Sydney. Um, so, and they got, hadn't gotten them a new place. So, so I was there in the beginning of that place. And then after about a year, well, maybe not that long, we started, decided to open up Melbourne. So I helped with that. And a little bit after that, uh, I started the temple in Perth, Western I've, Australia. I've, I've been fortunate enough to see Sydney and Melbourne temples, beautiful. I haven't seen Perth yet, but I'm sure it's gonna. It must be amazing. Uh, a very vibrant communities there. I'm hearing in Australia, especially with the temples right now. Um, do you keep in touch uh, now? I know you're in Sweden, but uh, do you have any? I I have uh, uh, old friends. Uh, yes, um, so I, I keep in somewhere. I have to say that the temple uh, in Melbourne, then of course, wasn't the present temple in in in, in Melbourne. It was a uh, our first temple was Upendra uh, and Upananda, 
they had opened a, a little garage. It was just a garage converted wow. into a temple and a little house. Uh, so um, that's the first temple. And then we moved to St. Kilda. Okay. Yeah. So that's, uh, and that was interesting because Prabhupada came there. And in the back, it was a very tall building. And in the backyard was one tree. And it was just long, long, long no leaves going up, 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 up to the top. And there are the leaves. And when Prabhupada walked by there, you know, then he said, oh, this is a former owner, former resident here. He so attached. Because there was hardly any any room to live, but, he, you know, a slender tree going up. <laughs> oh. Prabhupada's compassion is just amazing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So now that you've, um, after, after, of course, you've started those temples up, Srila Prabhupada then uh, requested you, suggested you to help Ajit Prabhu spread Krishna consciousness in your native country of Sweden. So now you're, you're in Australia. You've traveled around uh, Prabhu. You, you know, you, we all you, did practically. It was a you know the world we had to spread this so we all did as it says so how did uh, that come about now so 1973 you traveled back and how was those initial days uh, in setting up in in Sweden what is like what what I'd like to know is what is Swedish culture like first of all and then how did they take uh, you know respond to the Hare Krishnas in Sweden okay. Can I just backtrack a little bit? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, um, yes, Prabhupada did. Um, Ajit Prabhu wrote him because we, he, Ajit and I, we translated, uh, you know, uh, Krishna, the source of all happiness, and so you know, little pamphlets and small books. And together with uh, one devotee in, in Germany, he was also Swedish, so we had that. And uh, Ajit wrote to Prabhupada asking if he could go and he, Prabhupada said yes yes of course and uh, Vegavan is there why don't you go with him and you know like that but before before I left uh, Australia I went to see Prabhupada um, he was visiting then I was in Perth and I went to see him and one day he he called me into his room and uh, there was another hostel, holder couple there uh, Upendra and a third, and I'm a little sorry to say I don't remember who who that was. And Prabhupada said I have, he had a new idea that uh, when we go, we should go out, uh, dress in normal dress, get a job, and start inviting people back for prasad and uh, you know and getting closer contact, and it pre start preaching in that way. So actually, when we came to Sweden, we, uh, when we, I came with that type of goal to do that. Uh, but we spent a, a few weeks getting prepared in, in Germany. Uh, and our GBC at the time thought, nah, let's, uh, I don't know if he said wait with it, but he said, don't do it. Uh, mm -hmm. We do the traditional way. We go there and distribute books and uh, so forth. So that's what happened. That so that was put on the shelf for a while. Later, I came to do it, but uh, yeah. So Swedish culture at that time. This remember, this is in the beginning of the seventies. This is mm -hmm. the um, the height of the leftish movements in uh, in in Europe. Um, uh, you have. The Bader Meinhof in Germany doing revolutionary things, in, and um, in Sweden too, there was a very strong Mao-inspired uh, uh, leftist movement. So, when Prabhupada came, and we came, but mainly Prabhupada when he came for his programs, mm -hmm. it was like uh, the meeting of two continental shells, you know, boink, Marxism, materialism versus spiritualism. Um, so it didn't go so well with the with the meetings that we had with Srila Prabhupada, although mm. a few devotees were made from it. But uh, so that's more or less in the academic communities. Um, they were too much influenced by this materialistic philosophy to really appreciate 
uh, this saint that came. They had they probably would have tolerated someone like Vivekananda or something like that. But right, um, yeah. But Prabhupada, who had a strong will and a strong message, uh, surrendered to Krishna. Um, that was clash, you know. But oh. we, when we first came, which is a few months before, we found it refreshing because people were more, or shall we say, educated. And they'd heard about the Vedas, they heard about the Bhagavad Gita in general. I mean, uh, not so many people, but still enough for us to be enthusiastic. Oh. So we met with a lot of goodwill, uh, actually. But uh, yeah. I don't know if that answers your question, or did I? No, no it, it's um, it. So it must have been in those initial days, because I'm sure setting starting temples is is not an easy job. It's very difficult, and then getting a congregation together to come. So it looks like that. What was the first, should we say, year looking like? in the, this you know place in iskon sweden uh, where was the exact temple whereabouts the, was it uh, based uh, and how many how many devotees were coming at that time uh our first when we first came we lived in a camping place we had a tent so we used to go from there into and into the streets uh and then uh -huh. we uh, we graduated to b borrowing some uh, student rooms in that university from oh, wow. old friends while they were going off on the summer holidays and then uh we eventually get got enough uh, money together to rent a house uh, at least we had the first installment and uh, that's where Prabhupada came he came just a few Francis. months later yeah and when he came a in September, whole... I think, was it? In That's September, right. Think, yeah. First, first week of September, uh, he came, and uh, with <coughs> him came what could it have been? Forty devotees from uh, Germany and France and wow. somewhere from England. Uh, it was a huge caravan of, of of cars and Volkswagen buses, you know, coming, and uh, much to the dismay of our neighbors, uh, and. Um, so we had a lot of kirtans on the streets and it was, uh, it was like a huge festival um and then after that uh, when Prabhupada left well Prabhupada met with a lot of people he met with the uh, ambassador the indian ambassador in sweden he uh, met with uh, the uh, shall we say the christian intellectual elite at a, mm. uh, at a foundation that's a retreat center for the Christian thinkers and authors. He also lectured at the philosophical faculty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where... Stockholm um, and Up Uppsala, Uppsala University. Yes. Yeah. Bo both Ajit and myself had attended Uppsala University at that philosophical faculty. Mm. Now that I have to say something that... Uh, all the devotees will know Krishna does. Krishna does set up all these meetings because we, we, there's so many things happening that we had to delegate. Uh, so Krishna did a great work before when Prabhupada came. Yeah, wow. I would like to have that said. So Prabhupada came to the uh, faculty in Uppsala, in uh, the philosophical faculty, and he lectured there. But um, they were not in a mood to really understand, you know. Even when we went there, uh, Ajit and myself, uh, there was so much Marxism philosophy going on that, you know, even the word consciousness would not be accepted. So uh, mm -hmm. they, they asked us for books that they can have in the library on consciousness. I mean, this is how bad it was. Yeah. But then Prabhupada... Uh, I guess Prabhupada felt that uh, this is not uh, being received very well here. So he asked Ajit Prabhu uh, on the way to the another meeting uh, in a big uh, university hall. He asked him, what, what, you know, what are people interested in here? And, and Ajit said, left-wing politics. 
and uh, so uh, that that was really uh, inspired Prabhupada, I think, because he walked into that meeting and he lectured on the Varnashram Dharma, <laughs> first class, second class, third class, fourth class men. <laughs> And that was, you know, waving a red uh, cloth in front of the bull, you know. <laughs> so it was a, a, a real um, a provocation and students, some students were really provoked. Pro Srila Prabhupada was so bold in, in, in his way Absolutely. forward. Absolutely. Completely fixed <clears throat> in his consciousness and what he wanted to do. He never wavered or didn't, uh, you know. He knew what he wanted to get across. So they attacked him, and uh, of course, and says, what are you sitting there on the throne, and blah, 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 you know, all these uh, <laughs> insults came. Yeah. He says, so you're the first class member? I said, no, actually, I'm the fifth class. I'm the servant of all the others. He got actually applause for that, uh, which was nice. But there was, a, you know, a little bit of a, a, a nasty um, atmosphere for a while. And we had one devotee, he's known for, uh, what should we say, volatile temper, put it that way. Mm. So I had, to, I had to take him out of the room uh, because he was, I saw he was getting agitated. And I didn't want him to do anything to embarrass Prabhupada. So you would keep an eye and that was really... So in, in those days when... The mission in Sweden was starting. You seem to have gone to the universities, you've different people. We met the Indian embassy. So all, all this was happening. What about, and now you've even moved from the campsites into, you mentioned that you were in some uh, a student residence and then you got a place when Srila Prabhupada came in September. Yeah. How was it? How how long did Srila Prabhupada stay in Sweden at that time for? Uh, he stayed six you... days. Six days. And uh, the summer had been beautiful. Even in September was very, very beautiful. So Prabhupada would, took his uh, massage uh, on the balcony out there. It was a ni very nice building, you know. So Prabhupada liked that. And he also told us, in the, build a temple here in the backyard, you know. And... Um, you know, the mentality of us devotees in those days was Prabhupada said, build a temple, that's what we're going to do, you know. Uh, I was so sure it would come about. And even in, actually in, in Bombay, uh, I was in the car with Prabhupada and Shamasunda, and they were driving around in, the, in the, some of the suburbs, and Prabhupada said, oh, that is a good place, that we should build a temple there. And I was sure that that's going to happen. Uh, it didn't happen, uh, but, uh, you know, Prabhupada had visions. We've got some big temples in, in Mumbai as we've got Juhu and we've also got Chalpati yeah. and, uh, and just outskirts Eco Village. So it's it's all this happening due to the disciples of Srila Prabhupada, such as yourself. So it's it's amazing for us to see this because... One thing I've seen is that, you know, when we're looking at how are we going to do this? Okay, let's let's have a center. Uh, how are we going to do it? What What is the, you know, the inspiration to ha make it happen? And sometimes the faith can be um, weighing this way and that. Okay, can it happen? Will it happen? Will it not happen? But here, we're hearing when Srila Prabhupada was on this planet, and, and we've seen so many examples of this through the disciples, such as yourselves, it's like it happened one way or another it happened yeah um could could you uh just uh, because you like you said probably parts magic uh i really was interested in hearing and of course now can you can you give us some pastimes that where when in you know this inception of this new temple uh and things happening that certain things happen you you thought this is only because Srila Prabhupada's given his blessings that this has happened, uh, that increased your faith, should we say, in, in the process itself, in building this in, in Sweden. Oh, so many things. Uh, as most devotees know that uh, Srila Prabhupada imbibed us all and still imbibes us all with this uh, unshakable faith that anything is possible. And um, I think... 
I was amazed. For example, we we were. I think we had. We had about two thousand dollars in a bank account, and we went to buy a huge manor. Uh, just outside, um, just outside Stockholm. Beautiful location. We still have it, by the way. Um, and we, we could have thought, how is this possible? Two thousand dollars, you know. But we thought anything is possible with proper. So um, Ajit and myself, we um, started go. We went to see the the the. Previous, not the previous owner actually was dead, but uh, the mm. owner before him. And he took a liking to us. And he was a really rich man. He turned out to be a bit of a crook, but he he, he was, uh, not to us, but he was a really rich man and he liked us. So I'll tell you the one incident. Um, somehow or other, we, he wanted to give us this... Uh, uh, not give, but let us buy this um, uh, beautiful place, and um, we managed to uh, to secure something through England, uh, some uh, help. And uh, on the at the moment when we were going to sign the papers, uh, I another. Very unpleasant, very rich crook comes mm. and he brings out cash. You'll have all this money cash, he told them, you know, um, which was more than we could produce mm. uh, by far. And he was turned down simply because that man liked us and really disliked wow. us. Yeah. Uh, and that. Is Prabhupada's magic? You know, uh, uh, usually money this, talks, but uh, not in yeah, this case. Yes, yeah. this is this is this is another. I think we got to have a hashtag Prabhupada's magic, uh, especially we got Vyas Puja coming on. So those that are online, hashtag Prabhupada's magic. Let's start that off. I think that'll Sounds be a good, good. one. <laughs> so Prabhu, it, it's it's so amazing to hear like this individual that you buy the property off. They didn't know you before, did they? they did they know about, should we say, Shila Prabhupada, Iskon, or was it just that meeting uh, when, you, when you went to get it? Uh, it actually was, we went with wigs, put wigs on. not uh, to, to cover uh, your shikas. Yeah, so we, and also <laughs> this is our first meeting and we met in the Grand Hotel, the most expensive hotel in Stockholm. Um, so we had a uh, 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 wigs on, but uh, he started, he really started liking us. So then after a while we could, no, not in the same meeting, but later meetings, we could uh, be our normal selves. And um, so, and, and what happens was uh, one devotee, a Swedish devotee, he had a father who was somehow he knew this man, this uh, previous owner. So he could put in a good word for us also. So it was all these things coming together, Krishna's mercy, you know. Uh, it was an extraordinary happening. Extraordinary. It's, it's fantastic. And you had wigs on. You're hearing it here first, everybody. <laughs> uh, I, I know I know. when traveling in Dubai sometimes, uh, Dubai, some of the countries, we wear caps. Uh, so, uh, and here, we're hearing they wore wigs. So you took it to another level. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's quite special. Um, so now you've got this building, everything, you know, it, it, it's, it's great to see how Sweden is flourishing in this way. And thanks to your help and, of course, Ajit Prabhu, um, but you also after then, what what did you do after? Because Sweden, you stayed there and uh, served as as temple president until Srila Prabhupada left his body. Uh, what were your plans after that, Prabhu? What, if I may ask? Uh, yes, we we um, 
we uh, actually uh, accumulated um, quite a few devotees. The devotees st started coming in now that we had facilities. Uh, we had very, very austere facilities in town before that uh, with only running cold water and, you know, so it's very austere. But now we get this beautiful mansion and um, we, we started uh, making a beautiful temple room and things like that. And devotees started coming. And uh, quite a lot of devotees, actually. And um, what happens, uh, one of my pet projects was uh, starting a radio station. And um, yeah, and that was very, very successful. I mean, I loved it and uh, it became successful. And we used to, uh, you know, you bring a few devotees together and we have discussions. And uh, and uh, one of our most famous programs are the ones that we used to do at night, from midnight down to six o'clock in the morning, answering questions from people calling in, those who couldn't sleep, those who were a little in anxiety, people uh, inquisitive, those who are working nighttime shifts. Um, very, very interesting time. And um, so that's that was one of my pet projects. Uh, and then we also got a farm wow. a few years after that, uh, which also is something that I really liked. Uh, fell in love with this farm. And this is Prabhupada magic again. Um, it was a beautiful farm um, with lots of houses, perfect for us. And um, so, uh, but it was zoned as a farm. Mm. And uh, of course, none of us were farmers. <clears throat> so how to do that? We managed to um, produce, don't ask me how, we produced a certificate from one of the devotees that he um, had a farming background in um, then Czechoslovakia. So um, anyway, that got through and we got approved, but trouble came. Uh, it was approved in one instance and then was uh, rejected in the other. Hmm. And this went on for two years, back and forth. And in the meantime, these poor sellers, well, they're not poor. There's a huge, um, Alfa Laval is a huge concern uh, producing farming products. So we had meeting after meeting with them. And the same thing there, they, they liked us for some reason. So they, they, they decided to keep us as buyers. And, they, and in the end, when the final approval was given, I'm not a businessman, but somehow or another, I just, Krishna's mercy, quoted, we'll buy it, but we'll buy it for this sum, you know, which gotcha. was lower. Yeah. So, and that was, that was accepted. And, uh, you know, where do these things come from? The proper. The proper, like the building that the other person was offering so much more, but this person went with yourselves. And here as well, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like it's like uh, Prabhupada magic. Yeah. Uh, wow. Now, thank you so much for giving these insightful uh, discussions. And I'm, I'm conscious that uh, 40 minutes has nearly come really quick uh, just from our conversation. So it's been so lovely to talk to you. I, I want to just um, touch on a few things after as well. Um, you also served as regional secretary. Uh, until 1985 um so you carried on and of course you have a family um and you also been in the Gohashta life as well um had some should we say duties there um and one thing that i found well there's many things i found interesting about your life but one thing uh, i really thought wow this sounds cool is um you you yourself are a Hypno, you did hypnotherapy, but you're an uh, uh, ethical hypnotherapist. Uh, and you were also the director of the Swedish School of Ethical Hypnotherapy, uh, uh, which I gather uh, is something still you are very connected to, if I'm correct? Yes. Uh, yes. And the reason why I call it ethical is because Please. when you're doing therapy, um, morals is foremost and utmost 
uh, in yes. order to to be uh, to be perceived as sincere uh, as honest and uh, because we're also dealing with hypnosis in hypnosis manipulation is possible hmm. and uh, we want people to change but we don't want manipulate to manipulate them to change we want that change to come from within so uh, I stress morals, I stress honesty, I stress ethic and ethical outlook on, on life in general, but especially in therapy. And how did the hypnotherapy aspect come? What, you know, because there's so many things out there that, you know, you've got so many skill sets now, you've helped create temples, uh, management, um, so, how did hypnotherapy come about, if you don't mind? No, I don't mind. Um, well, I uh, you have to remember, this was uh, the uh, troublesome, uh, for years gone, troublesome decade in the 80s and mm. somewhat in the 90s. And so I decided to resign from um, my uh, managerial duties. Mm. And... Um, so I had to make a living. And I figured uh, that I learned a lot being uh, on the radio for so many years and discussing hearing people's problems and so forth. And someone suggested to me, why don't you uh, ask some money for it? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I couldn't do it, of course, as a devotee uh, doing a Radio Krishna. That, that, that's one thing. but. I figured out, yeah, well, I have acquired a lot of uh, knowledge about the human being and, and, the, and the, its drives and motivations. So um, I did uh, get an, um, for, I thought, and I don't, I want to get a, a way of living that is, uh, you know, suchi, not, not uh, contaminated mm -hmm. by so many things. And therefore, uh, and, and a, a devoted friend of mine, sent me uh, 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 some information about a, a teacher in hypnosis in England. Uh, I went to see him and I liked him and I liked the way he was teaching, teaching and so uh, that's how I started. And I find it's perfect for a devotee because, you know, as you say, you don't, you don't have to dirty your fingers with uh, somehow the direct or indirect meat products or... or mm. Or, or the breaking the principles. So, and because we are pretty well equipped to give not only um, the um, standard therapy, but also like existential. And mm. uh, for me, the extension of, of um, ethical is the existential, uh, the spiritual background. Without the spiritual background, any therapy is just patchwork. It might help, mm -hmm. it may help, surely, but um, it is, after all, patchwork. So um, to include um, our, you know, our understanding of, of, the, of the soul is, is very important. Because what we lack in the world today is, everyone's asking, who am I, who am I, and I have to realize myself, and, and nobody knows. And, um, and there's also a source of great anxiety among people. Mm -hmm. You know, angst is a very, a very frequent uh, problem. And we can actually help with that, with a little bit of training in the techniques and so forth, but in combination with our Krishna consciousness. It's great. There we go. So it's a very suchi way of working, which makes complete sense. You don't get your hands dirty, which is fantastic as well. Exactly. Yeah. So, Prabhu, um, you know, it's been such an honor speaking to you. Um, and it's it's a privilege to hear the, the pastimes that you had with Srila Prabhupada. And as we've coined it now, Prabhupada magic, uh, you know, and so many examples of this that just helps us to increase our faith. Um, Do we have one minute? Yes, Can I, sure. Yeah, okay. Um Another magic I'd like to talk Please. about is, yeah. is, is uh, well, it's, it's magic for me. You know how Prabhupada in the morning, he would take his morning walks, uh, and yes. then he, he would come back to the temple, and we would all be bowing down to him as he comes. Uh, we 
sometimes we used to line up in both sides and and uh so Prabhupada came in and um and i bowed down of course and everything stopped and i looked up i see his feet just just in front of me and uh, i looked up and he looked down at me to me and he said why haven't you come to see me and I said, well, I, won't, I wanted to say, well, Prabhupada, little me type thing. And it, I knew as I was going to say, this, sound, this is, doesn't sound right. So, uh, yeah, I don't know, Prabhupada, I stuttered something. And then, and then uh, he went to his rooms and in the Shima Bhagavatam class, uh, someone was giving it. Someone knocks on the shoulder and, and, and says, Prabhupada wants to see you. And um, so I went up to see it. And he just wanted to be, have a friendly talk. That's oh. Prabhupada. That's my Prabhupada. You know, I got to know Prabhupada that way. But I can could not take it to the same level like Hari Suri, who used to banter and, you know, talk with Prabhupada so freely. I, I wished I could, but I couldn't. But there's a lot of awe and reverence still. But still, I... I'm so happy I saw the person Prabhupada behind the icon, you know. That's my, uh, that's my magic. That's your magic. Actually, there's a lovely comment that came in just on this. I have to share it. It's, uh, um, so this is from Chudamani Dasi, and she's saying, Hare Krishna, happy Sri Krishna Janmashmi to you, both of you and all the viewers. His Grace Vegavan Prabhuji, you have a unique name. Listening to your spiritual journey highlights how Srila Prabhupada touch turned you to be a genie. <laughs> so I, I really love that. Co-opening temples in Australia and Sweden and many other preaching activities. So there you go. His touch turned you to be a genie. That is Thank Prabhupada's you. magic. I That's just wanted Prabhupada. to highlight it. Thank you so much for sharing your insights and I before we before we finish I really would from all your experience I really would like if you could give some pearl of wisdom for the next generation to all of us how we can take it forward and how if there's something you've seen that and how things are going how can this generation right now and the generations come try to live and try and breathe that Prabhupada magic. We would love to hear from your experience. Oh, my goodness. It sounds a little presumptuous that I would be able to give pearls there. Um, but I think they, you know, um, I think something that we kind of lost along the way. I'm not talking, I don't know now how it is, but something that I, I found ourselves drifting away from slowly as we're becoming more of an organization, mm. was the was the relational quality, you know, the, the, the quality between devotees. After all, what is a movement uh, if it's not a movement of loving relationships? That is our strength. And as I as I remember we're looking back, it was more of that because that builds strength. Uh, you, you, you strength, you know you you know, you have your god brothers and god sisters, and mm -hmm. we're all, you know, servants of God. So, if we can become better at dealing with each other, I think that's the future. So, loving relationships, yeah, and dealing with. Because after all, you know, we are after we 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 want to, while we here practice as much Krishna consciousness as possible to prepare us for, for the higher dams. And what is the relationship there? Loving relationship. So if you can't practice it here, what to speak of thinking, even thinking going there. That is a pearl of, pearl of wisdom there. So let's have those loving relationships and let's make that the foundation of going forward. Thank you so much, Vigavan Prabhu, for your time. Thank and you one per much. one person just wrote that listening to this while preparing Vyas Puja offering for Srila Prabhupada, especially Halova. Uh, <laughs> thank you for sharing your Srila Prabhupada with us. So ah, thank you. I like the way she said your your Srila Prabhupada. Did she say yes. that? Yes. yes, she did. Thank you for sharing your Srila Prabhupada with us. 
because we all that. have different relationships with him so we make him our own very good there we go and thank you for everybody for tuning in uh please uh if you if you want to get in contact uh with vega van prabhu and find out more i'm sure that how can people get in contact with you if they wanted to vega van prabhu uh what's the best way goodness uh i suppose it would be an email or, or something like that yes email um, it, it, that's what i can do we can, we can share that if so if anybody just message the gbc sbt team and then we will make that contact for you uh and we'll do it like that so at least that way you don't get bombarded but i'm sure you're going to get a lot of uh, messages coming so thank you for your time and thank, thank you, you for today much. and happy thank janmashmi uh, yes, uh, we you're celebrating because we're we're one time zone different from each other, so we're still celebrating Janmashmi. So, uh, so happy Janmashmi to you, Prabhu, and Hare uh, and we'll see you soon. Hare Krishna, everybody else. Hare Krishna. Hare Bo.